So the idea is uh, in, during these days to discover, it's called it, um, orientation in the integral approach. So to discover we have like these are different degrees of depth. Every knowledge we can, um, you know, there is a difference between a person who is now learning the alphabet or learning to speak and then uh, Baudelaire for the literature or Pushkin or Shakespeare to, to have a very big depth or uh, between uh, me and music and Mozart for example and Drago somewhere in between. So these are different depth of uh, knowledge and understanding and mastering of certain topic and it's um, good to to know it and to use it because we meet people with different depth and if we ignore this if we say it's all the same no matter what's your depth it's nice because uh, we'll see the values that I write here this directly gives the idea of values we're gonna speak about of course the markers <laughs> we're working one minute ago and now when is that uh, so, uh, so it's good to know that everybody is the same and has the divine spark and to be gentle and to love everybody no matter of their depth of knowledge. Oh, but on the other side it's good also to consider to take in count that you are a specialist for example for to me at least from what I know you you are from all of us you are in the biggest depth of uh, sport and um, physical um, culture in uh, handball, for example. So when we speak about this topic, you will be uh, like uh, to me um, a person who I will consider as with bigger knowledge than me. I never played handball in my life. Uh, so it's good to, to know this. Mm. And similarly, we want to discover this system, the integral approach. We're gonna to uh, say what it is. And again, we have different depths. So first will be like what we call the zero stage of knowledge. It's when we just hear there is something like this. We know that this exists. Then we can uh, have the orientation. So let's know that um, what we call integral approach. It is the, um, a synthesis of all the human wisdom since the beginning of uh, humanity until nowadays. So the, as we know, there are quite some valuable um, schools which produce content, in fact. For example, we have the Vedic tradition, the ancient Indian scripts, which contain quite important content, uh, which was uh, actual in these days, thousands of years ago, but it's also actual today. Then uh, we have ancient China, um, we had uh, Egypt, we had um, the wise men in ancient Greece and all their schools in Italy, Pythagoras plotting. We had uh, the Enlightenment uh, centuries. We had uh, then more, more contemporary. We have uh, Einstein, Maslow, uh, Schrödinger, um, Steiner, Ben Saduno. We have uh, schools which are. Um, providing content and also there are this it looks like these are two things we have spiritual schools we have scientific schools and often the scientific schools will refuse the spiritual and sometimes the spiritual will refuse the scientific but the idea of the integral approach is to integrate so uh, there are two important things in some spiritual schools to just ignore them because they are subjective reality and two important things from the science which is objective measurable uh, and reproducible uh, to, to just ignore this so the idea is to integrate this knowledge uh, to leave aside all the things which will uh, make us fight uh, to each other for example do we call it nature allah god uh, christ or uh, the divine mother or the big center or the source of everything or we say that we are atheists, that this thing does not exist. So this we put aside. We just study the, the characteristics. Um, same, for example, we have the fact that the water is freezing and then the water is getting warmer, warmer, it's evaporating. And in, uh, we invent the degrees Celsius, so there are 100 degrees between the freezing and the evaporating <coughs> of water. 
Then we have the scale of Fahrenheit where there is not 100 is different. Who is wrong? Who is right? It, they are just uh, both uh, uh, names to and systems to describe the same thing. So these schools from the antiquity till nowadays and in the integral approach we include the contemporary science, we include the, all the achievements of, uh, of uh, science. Mm, but we have a criteria to measure what is adequate more and less adequate. Same for the spirituality. So we just uh, search for the essence, extract it and we essentialize. So um, here for example we'll make some difference between, uh, we hear often what is holistic, holistic approach. Holistic uh, also, in this, we are going to explain every term. For example, to me holistic means one, to you holistic means another. So, in the integral approach, you always want to explain one term, or this word, what we meant under it, so we can have clearer communication. And we also agree other systems which use different words. The idea is to explain the content and to extract the, the content, the essence of the content. Because I cannot in one life become specialist in physics, in chemistry, in biology, in medicine, in permaculture, in everything. But I can benefit from all this knowledge of the centuries, from all these teams of specialists which devote all their life in physics. And they can essentialize. It means really to take the essence of information and to produce understandable teaching which can be teached in different stages of depth. Exactly today we decide for 10 days together and in these 10 days we will just enter in one depth, the first depth which is orientation. So the integral approach is not a, f it's not a believing, it's not a religion, it is a, a workshop, it is a one room which is full of tools and these are tools of success. As uh, Stephen Covey, one of the integral authors says, there are these principles of success. So no matter if we believe in these principles, in their existence, or if we refuse them, no matter if uh, uh, we know about them or we ignore them, if we apply these principles, we achieve success. If we don't apply the principles, we don't achieve success. Like the principles, they are eternal and we are temporary and that's it, the situation. So when we say holistic, we understand a system a holistic system is a system which agree and observe the interactions into one system. To explain this, we will take the very simple example, for example, of homeopathy uh, as a system. In homeopathy, we know that the liver is related with the, uh, with the stomach and uh, it's known that all the body is an integral system and there are interactions and so we need to take care of this. But the um, holistic approach is using only one tool, one approach. <coughs> so in homeopathy, we use only homeopathy. The homeopathic system uh, is using homeopathic remedies. In biodynamic system, we use biodynamic methods. Um, and on the opposite of this, we have, for example, often the modern science, even though it gets more and more integral now with the time, lucky fully and thankfully, but we still have these remainings of the industrial times and this uh, science, progressive uh, science, where we, uh, it is a complex approach, which means that is using not like the holistic, only one tool to achieve, it's using many tools. So, for example, I have a pain here and I go to a doctor for the liver and this doctor is studying my liver, which is here, and he will give me a pill for liver, he will make massage of my liver, he will give me gymnastic, he will give me a diet, he will send me to one big machine there to help me. So he will use many tools to help my liver. But the pills he is giving me for the liver, they are destroying the stomach. But he say, oh, next door is the doctor for stomach. Uh, I'm a liver doctor, so so um, it is complex approach, but it's not holistic. And the uh, integral approach, it is in the same time complex and uh, and holistic. So complex plus holistic, it is integral. So in the same time to understand the system, the interaction, in the same time to use all the available tools to improve the state. And the third to be integral, so it needs to be holistic, it needs to be complex, and the third is need to be essential. 
instead of giving all the details, for example, instead of you teach me all your knowledge of handball, which you're not gonna work with me, you can give me uh, tips so I can know a certain tips to play very basic handball, like the rules, for example, and some basic tips how I can be a successful player and I will suddenly be a bit more successful than him who doesn't know these tips if we enter in a match of handball, even though I would de devote very small time into this. So this is the idea, that's what we want to do today uh, for this uh, little course with permaculture, with human health, with nutrition, with biorhythm, with morning practice, with interaction in group, with all these meetings, sharing, family building, uh, spirituality and these important concepts, uh, also business and um, all these uh, things which are important part of our, our life. Mm, so how you feel until you are here? So we speak about truth. In the integral approach, we take from the ancient uh, Buddhist tradition, we say there is your truth, there is my truth and there is the truth. So I agree that me with all my approach and everything, I will not know the, the absolute truth. But if I'm more adequate, I could express one piece of the absolute truth. If I'm less adequate, I will not express uh, one piece of the absolute truth. So the idea is not to pretend that we know the absolute truth. We always know that we are just in the best case, we can harvest piece by piece the truth. And this truth is contained in you, in her, in each one of us. And the idea is to extract it and to have criteria how to recognize is this a part of the truth, of the absolute truth or not. And these are the criteria. But when we speak about what is true, what is not true, we mean in integral approach what is more adequate, more practical, more we reach to success without harm. Because the first rule in the medicine, and with this we apply to everything, the first is to don't harm. So we have clear methods which are helping, this we call the principles, and we devote 90% of the time and efforts into uh, these uh, principles which are gonna work. Then we devote, we have four groups. We call these the main methods or the principles. Then we uh, put 10%, uh, 8 to 10% uh, in, we call them uh, Dupaunitani methodi. Additional methods. Additional. Additional methods, which are also successful, not as successful as the principles, but they work and they're safe. So we, we in put our time and energy and resources into this. Then the third is suspicious methods. So this additional, you say. And then we have suspicious. Zero percent. I mean, between zero and uh, two percent, let's say, very carefully, and then we have uh, harmful, and then we uh, so we we spend uh, when you see just to, for example, to yes, sometimes just to go to get drunk because I have over here. It's the idea is to don't arrive to have over here or if I have to, to ask for uh, their other methods. So that's how we, we, we separate the methods and the integral approach we work with these methods. For example, to take psychedelic drugs as a medicine is from between here and here. In the best case, it can be here. Um, but yeah. So we are very clear about this that we don't uh, use uh, the psychedelic substances but just learn how to synthesize them with uh, natural methods and nutrition practice biorhythm so that's what was about the truth then let's see about the values uh, we regarding the integral approach four values and we will always remember and keep in mind these four values so the first value it's called the essential value it is that in uh, value is what is more valuable, who is more precious. Are you more precious than her or is she more precious than him? 
these are strange questions but we have criteria even for this so the first is that this we have the essential value everybody and everything contains the divine divine spark so it is absolutely equally valuable doesn't matter how deep is the knowledge is it a <coughs> drunk uh, criminal or is it a super good uh, doctor musician or uh, they have the same value they have the divine in them but knowing this we, we keep it in mind then we have the second value it is called internal value it is that the things which are more evaluate they are more valuable than the less evaluated things for example uh, we have this system of organization, we have uh, atoms which are organized in molecules, which are organized in cells, the cells are organized in tissue, which are organized in organs, in system of organs, and then a human body. So these are different levels of organization, we have higher organization, more complicated, uh, which is containing the lower organization. So what is more precious? I mean the higher, if I have to choose, do I lose my this part of my finger or if I lose this part of my body I will choose to lose this part because it's less complicated uh, than this one mm, or if uh, we need to choose do one person has to die so the whole tribe survives I mean we'll choose this instead the whole tribe to die uh, instead of this one person and then we have the external value which says that the lower consciousness is more important than the higher consciousness. Which means that if the cells of the liver, they decide to do whatever and to fall apart, uh, the liver will stop existing. And then the tribe is composed by individuals. So the individuals are more important than the tribe. Or if there are no Indians, they won't be the chief of the Indians. What a chief is he if there is no Indians to listen to him. So in fact, this is the third value. And then we have the fourth value, which is the essential value, uh, the um, specific value. It is, for example, you are uh, very good at drawing, so you are more valuable when we're gonna draw something. You are very good in sport, so you are more valuable when we're gonna do sport. Uh, you are an uh, advertising specialist, so uh, you will be more precious when we're gonna do advertising. You are an IT, for example, etc., etc. The idea is to keep all these four values because so, sometimes just you will see in life situations the group or some people will try to impose you one of the values. It's true, in certain conditions we prefer one of the values because it is important now but never forget the, the other three values because if we forget the other three we are not adequate. If we, um, we can get radical. The integral it's out of the radical limits. Here you have the very what you say in Netherlands, the very right party, the very left party, both of them, they are not very adequate. We need to um, pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine or all this. Uh, mm. Okay, let's uh, introduce another integral concept. Uh, these are just some terms which... So the integral approach now it's international movement which is uh, studied in different countries, mainly the countries which are more uh, ab abundant, more rich. And uh, we have like a terminology. So we unite all this knowledge and we create terminology so we can communicate like the Latin names in, in botanics, for example. So we say Holon and Holarchy. We have to... Um, point the contribution of Ken Wilbur. He is American and he started uh, about 30 f something years ago this integral concept, the idea to unite all of this. It was uh, his idea. Of course, it was the idea of Pythagoras as well and all these integral authors, but he is like the who gave birth uh, a kushera, <laughs> the integral put nowadays. So, Holon and Holarchy. Holon it means a unity which is composed by particles and which is a particle of a bigger unity. So in this uh, atoms, molecules, cells, tissue, organs, systems of organs, body, then family, then tribe, then nation, then uh, global humanity, all these are hollows. And in the integral approach we study the similarity and we study the differences. 
So for example, you nutrition, we, we say in the next lecture, next days, we say this is complete and proper nutrition for a human being. So it's not harmful. You can feed any human being with this and it's gonna work. This is a principle, but then you are a little bit different. You are female, I'm male, we have different age, different efforts. One is living in a colder climate. So there will be details, of course, on the nutrition, but uh, still keeping uh, this. So we studied in the integral approach the, what is uniting us and what is differencing us. So we can adapt to this. So we call a Holland this unity and then we have a holler. He is the whole organization of Hollands. And it's interesting because all the Holons, doesn't matter if it's a, a planet or a sun system or a galaxy or if it's a molecular or a cell or a human being, this is an example for a Holon. And all the Holons, they have impulses and these impulses are similar for all Holons. So why not to study this because this is universal, it is more adequate. So the Holon can be in a state of harmony or in a state of disharmony. So if the Holon is a harmony, we have first impulses to survive. The second impulse is to collaborate. So the cells, they want to communicate biochemically with the, cell, the other cells on the same level of organization. The humans, we want to meet with each other. We are social, we want to exchange uh, the organs, they communicate. But if we, the Holon is in disharmony, instead of survival, it wants to isolate. I am not feeling good, I want to not be in the group today, I prefer to isolate. And often it can enter in opposition, instead of collaborating, I will start arguing with you because I am not in harmony. The, in, the no, in the state of harmony we want to develop toward higher level of organization. So a human being wants to create, a, have a girlfriend for example, or a boyfriend to create a family. The families they want to create a tribe, a community. Uh, <clears throat> and if it's in disharmony, it's uh, more about disabling the upper level. So instead of creating a couple, I will try to destroy your couple, for example. <laughs> so, uh, or uh, yeah, instead of creating a union between countries, I will try to attack another country or another union of countries. So this shows that the Holland is in disharmony. And after we have the state of recovery, so when I'm not feeling good, I will say, listen, guys, today I stay in my room. I will take care of my liver. I will not eat, just have water. So I take care of my emotions. I take care of my organs. I relax. So this is the state of recovery, which is specific for the Holon in harmony. And here we have the degradation. So I, guys, I'm not feeling good. I go in the bar. I will smash myself with beers and whiskey because I don't feel good today. <laughs> yeah. So, um, sounds very uh, near to us. <laughs> so, that's it. It worked for all the hollows. Can I have a question? Yeah! So, this thing with, with the bar, you know, sometimes we all get messed up by life. Do you sometimes, you know that this is not the right thing for you to do right now, but you're like, fuck it, I'm gonna do it because I just can't do this anymore can't for example i would say this in bulgaria sorry and i would try to translate it като вече не можеш да издържиш просто да държиш центъра when you can't handle to handle the situation any longer this is how i translate it do you go to the bar then The other day we had a thought from Ben Saduno and he said there are three types of people. One type of people who are theoretizing, the second type of people who are living by experience and the third type of people who are living by ready solutions or by principles. So personally, I am a guy of experience <laughs> and <laughs> just I did this like uh, up to 35, my solution was the bar. <laughs> The thing is that then when it repeats, it's we have these two sacred laws of universe. The first is the free choice and the second is the причина и следствие, how you say? Cause and uh, effect, I think. Yeah. yeah, the cause and the effect, la conséquence et la cause. Mm -hmm. So, if I go to the bar, then I will have headache and liver problems, if I go too often, etc, etc. So, um, 
until 35 yeah, I was uh, from these people who were uh, really going full on for the experience and then I see that if I continue like this I will finish in suffer suffering <laughs> so I started opening to the integral approach and for the ready solutions if not it's completely understandable because when we have the evolution of consciousness is not going like this the conscious is not evaluating like this it's evaluating like this up 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 so it's normal to have this movement, it's normal to have our bar moments <laughs> and our little enlightenments. The idea is that the whole line goes like this instead of going like this, for example. The same is with, uh, with muscle recovery. If you do it correctly, this is the chart that you're going to see. Exactly. Mm. You start the integral thinking, exactly. This is to <laughs> find interactions. So the integral approach is similar like the nervous system. In the beginning, the first years, I was asking Dr. Poshkulev, come on, why I have to study so many topics which I know. I would just want to do permaculture. And then I understood that by studying uh, nutrition and all this, I will be a better gardener on the end. Like it does, uh, in the nervous system, you can have 1000 neurons but the nervous system is much more productive more there are connections so exactly the thing is that by studying this you start finding more and more interconnections of this type what you just pointed and that's how it works the integral approach then you start having information from nowhere and the last uh, because you um, pointed this we will uh, study the four it's another tool the four quadrants of uh, Stephen Covey Dear. <laughs> Do you remember, Buyan, the four quadrants? First, second, third, and fourth. Honestly, I don't. Okay, so here we have urgent, important. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Here we have non urgent important here we have urgent but non-important and here we have non-urgent and no important so this is different than uh, me and the, the other is the four quadrants of oh. Ken Wilbur because okay. quadrants is because it's yeah, like this. It's like so this is Covey. Okay. And the other it's Wil Wilbur. Uh, because this is for example one tool, exactly what we do in the orientation level of the integral approach, in the orientation stage. We enter in the, the workshop of the integral approach and we show you the tools like this is a chainsaw, this is a wood grinder, this is this, and you learn how to use these different tools. In the next stages you know that when you have a piece of wood, first I will pass it through this machine, then to through this tool, through this tool, and on the end I will have something beautiful. So this is the idea of our orientation courses, to that you know the tools in the workshop and you can use one tool, other tool, and then slowly, slowly. This is the first level which we allowed you after to get autonomous and to study yourself. And because when you know the system, then you can just interact and get a better, better um, worker. So this tool is called the um, four quadrants of uh, Stephen Covey. So we have the tasks and these tasks, we separate them in four categories. The first is urgent and important tasks. It's to, to take care of your child <laughs> or of the, the horses or of, uh, to drink, to eat. And uh, after we have uh, non-urgent but important. For example, you want to play flute, you want to study German, I want to deepen my knowledge in permaculture, to study integral approach. This is not urgent, nobody is urging you to do this, but you know that this is important for, for you, for your life. You have urgent but non-important and careful of this category, it's more than what you think. When you start observing during the day, you will see so many people are urging you to do things which are in fact no important. And here I can think, is it really important to them if I have the empathy and yeah? Urgent, 
but not important means that it's not important to you, but you have to do it because someone said that you have to do it. Is this what you mean? Yeah, in this case, you can think, is it important to this person? For example, you, uh, but very often it's not even important to them. I'll give examples now. Okay. Uh, and then you have no urgent and no important things. Uh, so, for example, one lady called me on the phone and she say, Hey, I know you from Trinoga. You know, I have a whole bag of old soap, homemade soap. Uh, please come to take it because I'm about to throw it away. And I know you will do something nice with it. I say, thank you. Okay. And then I speak with Barbara what to do with this soap. Okay, we can melt it uh, and make again other soaps, add herbs share it to uh, but now we don't have time for this it's not in our plan now we want to plant this garden you know we have our planning then i call it the neighbors do you need and no the neighbors they say me no we don't need this soap uh, now uh, but the lady just want to get rid of the soap and she wants to do something nice and uh, in fact she's urging me but for this i need to light the car you know and you know the way to go to zero it will take me more than half of day to go to take this soap then i put it somewhere the rats will attack it i need to protect somewhere this soap so this soap starts being a problem to me and uh, so i call her and we apply what we call the sandwich technique the sandwich technique is when you want to say something which is not nice to a person you put the not nice information in between two nice slices this is a sandwich technique so i call i say hello it's philip from vegetarian thank you so much for thinking of us it's very kind because it's really it's kind she wants to offer us the soap uh, but uh, listen we now we are uh, having other priorities and we're not gonna take the soap so one of the very important habit of the highly efficient people is not present you as a victim. We don't say I don't have time. I cannot. I'm obliged. I'm urgent. All this it's first is for the self-confidence is not good because we put ourselves as a victim. And second, the people see you as a victim. I have no time to, to come to you. Uh, I must go now. Sorry, I can know I must go. I have work. The people see you as a person who is not controlling, not possessing his time and his ener their energy, and you are the victim. So I always say, uh, for example, I must go to feed the horses. The horses, they need to be fed. It is necessary to feed the horses. But I'm not a victim, it's not that I must go. So I will not say, uh, because the, we are tempted to excuse, hey, sorry, I cannot come uh, because I must do other thing. Uh, excuse me, like I'm a victim, so I cannot take this soap from you. No, you, you present yourself uh, because this is my decision. I will not take it. Um, but thank you for thinking of us. And then you put the other slice and I'm sure you will find someone. <laughs> and uh, because it's very kind what you want to do to share your soap. Or if you can just put it somewhere visible near the trash bin and the people who need it, they will take it in Bulgaria. We know that there are people who look around the trash bins and this soap will go to Bitaka, it will go to the second hand market and someone will benefit for, on the end from this soap. Yeah. Um, so this way, in fact, from these two categories, you can steal time and you can invest here. And what is this non-urgent important, for example, <coughs> what I did this uh, piece of the tractor which needed changing, I did not change it and now I have a problem. Now I cannot operate with the tractor anymore. So I did not put this 15 minutes to call the tractor guy to order this piece, to receive it when I go to Svoge, to put another half an hour to mount it and then I will be able to use it. Now I find myself, I want to work and I cannot work now with this. Because I did not follow it, this, these rules. It's to check the oil of your car. To, to prepare your car for the winter, uh, to invest in your relation. In all the principle, no matter if it's our neurohormonal balance, we invest one hour in the morning, we give this time to our neurohormones, and then believe me, in the day we earn back this time because we are more uh, efficient, we did more things, we are more happy. Or I wake up, I start with a cigarette with a coffee, I did this for 20 years of my life, so I suck the last reserves of uh, hormones, and then on the lunchtime I need a beer or a joint to feel better, uh, so I run after the, or you have a relation, or I can ask from my girlfriend, you have to be like this, you have to be, don't watch this guy, don't do this, don't do that, 
and I will suck from this relation until it breaks apart or you just invest, invest, invest in the relation until it gets abundant and there is just this abundance or the compost you see we, we instead you can or just put some chemical spray and try to suck the last piece of this soil and last profit or we just put wooden logs carbon sequestration worms we spend so much time just to make a good soil in the end of course the result is abundant fruits and veggies so in all of this is to we need to act this way and from these two categories because more we spend time here this is very important it will lead us here. So every moment you just wanted to go to the bar and you did it, it's because you overexploited this. Mm -hmm. And from this we can really decrease this and when and to steal time from here and here and invest it here because when we spend too much time here and here between these two things, then on the end we finish here. I cannot anymore, I just go in the bar of course. Or I watch, spend two hours in the front of Facebook like this. This is my bar now. If I block it, I can just lose my time with nothing. I want to take for all of this. I only want to have it as a video, but... Yeah, it's always good to have it as a photo. the integral concepts mm, so we had this mm. this I'm gonna leave it to you so in your free time you just watch it and then we can speak on it uh, during the conversation part so these are like the overall ethics the spiritual ethics of the integral approach so you can have a look and uh, then we speak all this you just have a look and uh, then we speak on it. This, for example, is uh, so uh, about our open uh, pragmatic version. So, what is the story with the integral approach? Ken Wilber, he is an amazing person. He has a very big uh, ability to understand. He reads millions of pages to synthesize and to essentialize this integral approach. And it's very academic, just I cannot read these guys. With the books of Ken Wilbur I'm falling asleep, just I'm a different person. I, I can uh, a lot be interested when I have the wood and the stones in my hand, but uh, I'm not very good with this. And it's now still the integral approach is very developed by specialists, but it's very, very academic. And the, for most of the popular people, the normal people, we cannot really benefit. And as I told you, here we were this eco community 18 years ago. Dr. Pashkulev came here, shake my hand, and he said, It's 20 years I'm waiting this community, a such a community, to appear so we can work together. Why? Because he wants this uh, integral approach is not really connected to the life in nature, it's not really connected to um, this ecological thinking. Because the people from the universities, from the academic environment, often they live in cities, they have their life, their job, their academics, it's, it's okay, it's beautiful what they do, but just they understand it for them, it's not usable because one of the criteria of truth is to present the truth on a way the people will understand it. Because if I tell you one truth on a way you don't understand it, you cannot benefit from this truth. So the idea of Dr. Pashkulev was to take this integral approach and to offer it to unite these two worlds. Because one is the academical world of the integral approach, when we had the idea that instead of only one discipline, only physics or only economics, we can mix all them, we can make multidisciplinary science, we can have this integral approach, but on the other side we have all these eco-communities, all this permaculture flow, all these young people who go and live in the nature like we did here, but we have no approach. So we just are doing the second, like the first category, the scientists, they are like for the people who theorize, but they don't practice. Or if they practice, they don't experiment with big groups of people. 
The second category are the people of experience with eco communities. We try, but we try to discover the hot water. We we just try are the psychedelics uh, spirituality. So I spent 20 years eating mushrooms. Uh, and the idea of Pashkulev was to unite this, to offer the integral approach to the eco communities and to bring more ecology, more nature into the integral people, into the, um, the universities and really to mix the academic with the non-formal education, with the life experience. So that is the idea of, that's why he created this Integra Foundation and he called it the open pragmatic version of the integral approach. So we take the integral approach, the specialist, they essentialize information and then we create it into courses, into stages, orientation level, then basic level, between this we have one intermediate level, then specialist level, etc, etc. So now we did the orientation level the stage of depth and we are working on the intermediate it will take us maybe five years if we raise the the team on about 30 40 specialists because it means really good uh, job that's what we do with permaculture right we try to organize the intermediate knowledge of permaculture and the basic knowledge of permaculture will be quite important like imagine all the permaculture knowledge now to to create, to integrate it and to offer it on an understandable way and also affordable, to don't be super expensive, just to be puff, 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 you can have it almost for free. Um, so that's the idea of the open pragmatic version. And to these stages of depth, he's like, like <coughs> awareness, it's like you learn the alphabet, then we have this intermediate. Then basic is you're finishing your high school, you are 18, specialize it, you just become a master of this. And we have exclusive or exceptional, it's like Mozart in the music or Einstein in the physics. This is just sometimes it happens uh, exceptional things in some of the areas. And also the integral approach, we can visualize it on this way. What is containing? We have the general integral ideas, principles and methods which we call the brain of the integral approach, the integral theory. Or Ken Wilber call this is a map. But don't mistake the map with the territory. You can know very well a map, but does, mean, does not mean that you are walking through the territory. Yeah, a very good map can help you to walk through the territory, but it's not replacing your experience of walking through it. So we have the integral theory, the integral ideas, the map. Then we have the individual lifestyle, it is like the cardiovascular system, the blood of the integral approach. If we don't do this lifestyle based on biorhythm, of proper nutrition, of uh, adequate exercise, if of life in exchange with the natural elements, this um, natural spirituality, um, it's not works. Then we have the principle and methods of constructive communication, he calls it the heart of the integral approach, so it's how to act with each other. To forgive myself and the others basically and to constructively find solutions and then we have the ecological culture this is the backbone of the integral approach the spine because without it it's gonna break it's like uh, being without a spine <laughs> it cannot work so it is really to follow these principles as you can see we separate the gray water from the uh, black water to don't use too much electricity etc 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 this gets very actual now because we, without this the humanity will stop existing anyway and then we have the kaleidoscope which means uh, multiple secondary topics which are not so important one by one but as a whole they are also important part for example everybody should have something to develop the right brain the empathic brain so for example you will play flute you will draw you will dance it's important to have some type of art something which is opening us uh, or to have some purely intellectual for example you like the chess playing uh, you will like other things so to, to have this and to have all of this um, to integrally develop our personal, I will never be a super chess player or a super musician, but I have one flute and blow in it just to feel good and to, to open this part of me. And I will very... Um, another integral concept is the nest of life. 
so that we should always remember that in the integral approach the higher level of organization they contain the lower level so the body contains the cells and contains the organ if the liver starts hating his own cells it's not gonna work uh, so we have here the matter which is studied by physics then we have the life which is studied by biology the mind which is studied by psychology the soul which is studied by theology and the spirit by the, the spirituality or the mysticism into the spiritual meaning not mysticism to eat mushrooms uh, but this type of mysticism again to explain just the word here we have a very basic uh, what are the integral sources so India, China this is the symbol of Sri Aurobindo Aurobindo Ghosh the biggest eco village on the planet now it, which is working this is Bain Saduno um, way of representation the evolution of human soul and this is the integral representation so the mix of all of this of the evolution here again just because it's bulgarian and we want also to show the bulgarian contribution for the integral approach so this is given 100 years ago by this person peter dunov or bain saduno in bulgaria <coughs> so this represents the evolution of human consciousness how wide is the consciousness and how clear we perceive reality. Uh, if you have seen this movie Lucy, have you seen it? Yes. Yeah. Where she was eating one drug and then she get more and more clever. So um, in one moment, to how high is your consciousness? We can describe it how, in which degree you perceive reality. So if I bring one uh, child of two years old in this room, this child will understand this is a, this is a bottle, this is mama, this is a uh, fruit uh, then i will come here and i understand also the same things like this baby this uh, young uh, human but i understand also the books i understand the lamps how i know more or less how they work and then you come to imagine buddha enters here or one advanced soul uh, he will see and perceive much more things than what i'm perceiving so it is the ability of fully perceive reality and I was asking because since I leave this, uh, all the movies I'm watching through the integral theory and practice, I was asking why Lucy, she was advancing her mind and she get more evaluated, but she was like um, killing people on the street with her car because she needed to have to be fast and all this. And I understood in fact that she advanced only her mind. Mm -hmm. So she developed the mind part, but she did not have time to develop the empathy. That's why she was not really more evaluated. Her mind was more evaluated. All is about the brain usage. Um, but here is how more and more we see clear and how wide is the course. So we're in, we are in the belly of uh, our mother in the intrauteral uh, development. We are one with everything. We are really very wide but we understand nothing we cannot perceive clear at all the things so our consciousness is very wide and then we get born and then it gets for example also the societies here is about societies by the way we have primitive collective consciousness this is like i'm ready to die for my tribe i'm one with my tribe with the pure Zelenian people <coughs> the Zelenian blood is in my veins but you are from Pernik, for example, or from, I don't know, from Sofia. So we are, I'm not ready to support you, but you are from Jelen, so Jelen forever. Um, we see this every day, <laughs> in everywhere. Um, and then the consciousness gets more and more uh, clear, but to get more clear, the consciousness needs to focus. And it focus, I focus to myself, so it is called individual consciousness because in one moment we see that all this is manipulation the priests the religions the political leaders they manipulate the mass with uh, tribal consciousness for their own uh, benefit so we were why i don't want to be also a politician and to have individual consciousness and to benefit from it so uh, i focus on myself like see this i see more clear and then we continue the evolution and then we have the collective consciousness. That's where we are in fact. I understand that we are here similar, no matter that you are from Netherlands, you are from Poland, you are from Pernik, for example. We are all having, so we can uh, cover our needs and then we can go to cosmic and divine consciousness. So this is one representation of the vertical evolution and the different schools during the ages, they gave different. Mm. 
and another one for these days uh, because we just mentioned it this morning so we have the main groups of spiritual practice it's about integral spirituality so here we have the many ways to see the spirit soulful nature the spirit in art spirit over the nature the spirit in the human being the spirit in mankind an abstract spirit the divine supreme personality or uncompromising these are different this we observe we have for example Vaishnavi Hare Krishna personality uh, we have uh, Zen spirit everywhere we, it's, these are different things different ways to to achieve to grow our spirituality and they we cannot say this is right this is wrong we just study them and we take the adequate parts because uh, there are many ways to the to the enlightenment there is not only one way so this is also a way when one person tells you my way is the only way to enlightenment this is already less adequate than um, the other uh, but for us to essentialize all of this we have this main group of spiritual practice so the first is we study and we practice is self-discipline here uh, the idea of vegetarian place it's to just provide vegetarium literally means the perfect environment to grow it is a greenhouse with good systems so the plants they can grow but just we transpone it into a human system so we want to create a space when my body will be good my emotions my spirit and my relations uh, so uh, we need to practice this first is the self-discipline so we have practices for this you know we have our rhythm we need to be at time and all this. Then we have purification, so nutrition, fasting, uh, purifying the emotions, the thoughts, uh, and serving the higher reality. Higher, it's enough. The nature is a higher reality already, or the society. Because, yeah, all, often it can get also radical what is the higher reality. So we have to be careful here. But there are obvious higher realities like the benefit of the large, wider community, of the humanity, of the nature. So this is easy to... And in fact, it's filling my life. I have enough obvious things to do. So I don't need so much to think about these abstract things. If I keep practicing this, it's automatically growing. The growth of consciousness can be only a result. If I point it as a name, I did this for many years to practice different meditations or practices just to achieve growth. It's not working. It's not this. The idea is that it comes by balancing the character and deepening the knowledge. You construct a platform and the four quadrants of Wilbur by harmonizing them, it constructs a platform and automatically you're already on the next level. Then you keep constructing and then up it grows. So we just need to take care to get balanced, to dip the knowledge, to do the four quadrants, to uh, take care of our psychocognitive lines and then up it works. So after we do the self-discipline cleaning, purification and serving, it can come to the energy development. So this is, for example, the Kundalini practice we did this morning. You see it is enhancing the energy, gives us more energy. But also because of this balance, we knew today how to spend this energy. We invested it into something beautiful and contribution. Uh, and I can say that I'm very in influenced by the environment. If me, I go to Sofia and I do the same Kundalini after I will do whatever think I will not be able to harvest this energy so we also created this space for us so we can have a good place mm -hmm. to live and then of course you are welcome to share it but mm, yeah we are very dependent of the environment before becoming saints and avatars uh, which can for example Jesus Christ will come and he will drink and eat with the criminals and the criminals will become spiritual but if I can say, okay, it's very spiritual, I will go every day to drink and eat with the criminals, then more I will become a criminal than the criminals to become like Christ. So just to know where we are uh, objectively. So energy development, which helps our bioenergetics. And then we can pass to prayer, meditation and awareness in everyday life. Why is prayer before meditation? Because for the prayer we use the mind to learn how to meditate. So the first meditation which is through prayer. We use the mind as a tool because in many schools they try mind is bad, switch off the mind, kill the mind and why to kill this beautiful tool we have? Come on, it's like to kill the emotions, to kill the mind. Uh, so better to use this mind on a purpose or as we said um, 
about uh, Mohammed the prophet that he walks in the night and one guy meet him and say I know you you have so many women now in the night you go the shaitan the devil lives inside you and Mohammed say yeah I know the devil uh, lives inside me and I oblige him five times per day to pray Allah that's why we can use our mind to focus on our power and then this is the way we can really start meditating and when we pass through all these practices we can achieve awareness in everyday life because often here come these young uh, colorful people and they say listen you have your practice no worry i understand you that's your way you eat this way you pray you wake up early you work here at least i'm spiritual i'm just aware every day so i'm sleeping until 10 o'clock and then i play some music i smoke a joint and i sleep with your girlfriend but it's it's all this awareness it's divine you know so it's good and i ask them okay it's good but these are not the rules of philip these are the rules of the place the vegetarian so please cover for the self-discipline purification serving energy development prayer and meditation and then welcome to be aware um, so just uh yeah i wanted to uh, point this also what I get from it is that, that the ascension is, is that it starts with you, with yourself, and then the group. Because I have to be well, or I have to do all the practices, and I have to uh, uh, make myself well so that I can be part of the group, or how does that work? For me, it feels more like every Holland should be in, in harmony. Like, so that's you, but that's also your organs. And, like, if you're as, uh, as like, one whole and are not in harmony, then it's a lot harder for the group, the next whole and to be in harmony as well. I think. Like, if you have a liver, but there's, like, a few cells who are, like, mutating and forming cancer, then the rest of the liver can try as hard as it's can but it will not survive so every hole and should be but that's like I don't know if that's the mm. right way but that's how I understood it yeah it's just a toolkit which you apply to anything to you to the group we saw only one of the tools you have like 10 tools and then you can study yourself uh, Ken Wilbur is uh, calling this the Akal map all quadrants all levels so you have a, I met I meet Nick and I can study Nick what is the character of Nick how evaluated is his consciousness what are his competencies in different areas how he's sorting out in his soul with his body with his materialistic environment with his budget and with his cultural with his family with his cultural environment what are his uh, psychocognitive lines and then I can have Nick, I can study the same way Philip, each one of the group, and then to, through the characters we can combine people, it's very wide spread in uh, team building in companies, so you can have in the team people with different characters which accomplish each, one, each other, um, that's uh, the benefit, and to know that uh, you don't need to say I have to do this, I have to do that. If I do this, I will achieve success. Are we gonna do a practice like we did uh, yesterday? That's gonna put me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it will be really nice. If not, it will not be an integral conversation if we don't do some practice also. For the end, uh, to me, to be honest, just to sit with straight back and to do some balancing breathing. Uh, and then some deep uh, breathing uh, here like with yes. lower light yes. if not there is one formula before to fall asleep uh, which i use from Ben saduno it works really well um, when i go to bed you completely uh, personally i arrange my body i need to arrange my body on a certain way so nothing is painful mm -hmm. <laughs> and when i arrange after i don't move uh, until the morning i stay in the same uh, mm. position so i can really relax and then he say, uh, this is Svetli and Razumni Sushtasta, so light and, light and conscient beings. 
please protect my body and heal it while I sleep because I'm falling asleep and uh, me I will go to the great school of life to study to pray and to work so these are uh, from these techniques we were saying just before to fall asleep we have access to our subconsciousness so this way we can enter in good deep relaxing sleep instead of uh, fighting uh, all night with the guys who cut the forest for example <laughs> so better too uh, this is also one tip of individual practice or you can do any positive message just this one formula for this guy mm -hmm. yeah.